Welcome to the platform. Uh, I'm Andile, and today we have a special guest who is going to be talking to us about Ukutwasa or Khotwasa in Sitwana. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm going to let her do the honors of introducing herself. <laughs> okay. Togoza host, thank you for hosting and thank you for the invitation. My name is Gogo Fixit, Baba Manzini. Is that's who I am. I'm a Gobela, a trained Gobela. I'm a Sangoma. I feel, um, yes, let's go fix it. Okay, go go fix it. So basically, you know, just by your name, Inja, I can tell that you are a fixer. So do people come to you and they with their problems and then you sort, do you sort them out immediately? Is that what you do? Yes, I help people. Um, those who also do wake walk ins because the other people by long way, they were not aware that they had problems. Just that they realize what they are not moving forward with their life, they are stuck. So I do fix problems. Anyone who have a problem, as long as it's in my speciality and I work with them, I do help. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Look. Um. The reason why we are here today is that. I just want to understand, you know, because when I was speaking to you um, on WhatsApp, I said, you know, we, I want to understand Ukutwasa and 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 Omotwana, you know. So can we just mm -hmm. um, this thing of Ukutwasa or Kutwasa? I don't know if it's there in English. In English, you know, I don't know if, how do we address it in English. What is Ukutwasa or Kutwasa? Okay. So in English, I think it's initiation. Just that when we say initiation, there is a lot under it. So it's better if we say Khotwasa or Ukutwasa. So basically in the simplest form, Khotwasa is when a person goes to Kolifetro, when a person goes for initiation and then they go to a specific gobella that we've shown or a gobella that resonates with them or a gobella that is well practiced in a specific ancestral lineage or type. So you go there, there's, there's the initiate, they go for training there and then they get trained. They are taught herbs, they are taught about the ancestors, they are taught how to, they are actually trained how to know when the ancestors is about to come, when they come, how to balance their life between their traditional life and then their personal life. So that is what was honoring the people who have called you, which are by Dimo Bajajo, your spiritual guides, your higher self. And, you know, for me, obviously, uh, due to modern technology and being colonized, um, you know, they, <laughs> you might have symptoms and those symptoms, you know, you go to a doctor, a doctor will tell you or you are depressed or you have whatever, you know, medical um, condition that these guys put out. So how do you then differentiate between the two? Okay, it's not easy to differentiate where you have a calling or it's just sicknesses that come from the world that we live in. Because now we have so many illnesses, so many diseases, you know, but you can find out by consulting. You can find out by having dreams that you are shown. You can also find out by sometimes you might have headaches, you know, your pains, the body is in pains, your life is stuck. You cannot see movement, whether, no matter what you try but you're still at the same place. Even at home in your family, there might be fights, unnecessary fights. Like for example, you might be fighting because of one didn't wash the dishes. And then that's not something you'd argue about or fight about normally. So you'd also find that. And then another thing that most people miss when wanting to spot Kore, when was this person begin? When did this person begin having symptoms of a calling or having Kotoruwa Kebadimu? It actually starts at a younger age. Mm. You notice then just that you will not be able to spot them because you might not know. So you will see from a younger age, the child will be showing you things, will, tell, will be telling you things. The child will be able to spot unnatural things that are happening. They'll also be able to see spiritual things that are happening in the house and around the house. But then again, we also say, she's a child or he's a child, you know, maybe mm. while they are playing or something like that. So that's the, the one that is mostly missed, but that's the, the things that you can notice. Also struggling with getting a job or relationship problems yes, and finding imbalancement in your life. Mm -hmm. So basically 
uh, you know, when you have like a lot of problems and when a lot of things are not going right, and also you have these, I don't want to say supernatural uh, abilities, but I want to know like, how do people get selected? You know, because now it's, I think it's even cool now to, you know, to be a Sangoma and some people might be like, ah, embrace. <laughs> I also want to be one. How, how, is there a way of getting selected or don't people have control over that? Okay. I always say we all have ancestors on top of us. Mm. But it's not all of us who are going to go through the journey of us. Yes, people are selected. And some is not because of they are selected, but it's because of it has been passed down. I get being selected and a gift that has been passed down, they are not the same. Mm. So when I mean passed down, I mean like you might have inherited it from your parents, your grandparents. So that is when it has been passed up. Passed down. So being selected, it actually begins from the time the mother has concepted the child. That's mm. when it will begin. You know, some people don't even know that they are pregnant. They find out when when they're giving birth that they oh they have been pregnant. Some people they they conceive after a long time, and then once the child is there, they then realize okay this child is gifted so and so. And then another thing, how you are selected, you know, that you know it back in the days we used to have. People, uh, I, I, I think it's a bomb in Swan. We call them bomb me, but happen or Bahu Bahu to Sarat. That's when a, a grandmother or a, an elder in the family helps their community. So the child normally is the first born, whether it is the girl or a boy. They train them or they have selected them because they are the first one and they'll be learning from an early age. So mm. that's how you are selected. And also, if you are able to connect well and your ancestors know, like, for example, if there are five siblings in the family, but only two or, or one of them are able to listen well, to respond to their ancestors, then your ancestors will definitely select you and then you'll be chosen to be the healer of the family or to be the leading healer of the family. So basically every family needs to have a healer or that if every family has a healer. No, not necessarily. Well, uh, I get in some other families, they have healers because of, okay, let me just say this first. There are people who go through the journey of Kotwaza to heal certain things in the family. That is why it's so important to know what happened in the past, what needs to be fixed, so that some people do not have to go through Kotwaza. So when Kotwaza, it's a form of, uh, of Komu, or I don't know if I can say Lobwana, because it's not Lobwana that is being passed down from one side of the family to another that can be paying out debts. And mm -hmm. then not another thing, you other, other people can go through Kotwasa because of they were selected. But not every family is supposed to have a healer. But in others, you find that in a family, you even have three healers or even the whole family, they are all healers. So it always differs with the lineage. It differs with, with what came before that that family has been there or was there. So what happens now if you are selected and you and you're like, no, I don't want this. Uh do are, are bad things always gonna happen, or can ancestors be like, okay, we understand. Uh let's move on to the next person. Well, what happens if you're like stubborn? You're like, no, not for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so normally this is what happens if uh, there are three generations and then it began with the first one and then they rejected the calling, it might go to the second generation, they reject it, it goes to the third generation. Okay? And then if the third generation doesn't accept it, it also goes down to the fourth one. But then this is what happens. If you do not accept your calling, the common things that might happen, you will not succeed in life, you'll be stuck, you'll forever be sick, Financially, because normally most of the time, spirit uh, when you, when you're having a calling, it mostly attacks your spirituality and your financial life, and then your emotions, also mentality. It affects you. So you might find out someone being mentally ill or mentally disturbed, not in a natural form, but because of they rejected their calling somehow. Mm. And then another thing also, you might you have to know which calling have you been called for, because also you may go again for the training but then because you didn't go to the correct one your ancestors might see as if you didn't go for the training because you didn't follow the correct training that you're supposed to take or you didn't embrace the specific uh, badimo, ba, the badimo that have called you so if you do not go for training there are so many things that might happen 
so many things may stuck in your life. There might not be progress. There's a lot of things that, they, that can happen. But then how do you know which one is the correct one? I always say your ancestors will tell you. And then also consulting is the best also. Because you also have to confirm. Because if you haven't went for training, it's very tricky to know where this is the, like, for example, Malopo have called you or you've been called by Manguni, or you've been called by Mandao, or you have all of them, you understand. And also mm -hmm. you have to know which dreams show what specifically. That is why it's always important that when you're about to begin your spiritual journey, you have a spiritual mentor or you have a gorilla that's going to help you from get go so that you do not do things that you are not supposed to do so that you don't fall in the incorrect path. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, no, I understand. Because my second question was going to be, um, you know, especially in big cities, there are so many fake, uh, you know, initiation mm -hmm. schools and so many fake things. And then, you know, like it's, it's, it's it becomes difficult to, to, to know, you know, which ones are legit, which ones are not. But I guess you just touched, touched on that now, you know. So look, and I always ask this question, because I feel like it's a very important question. These days we see a lot of spiritual healers uh, being everywhere. And I always wanna know why, why are so many, especially young people coming out as, as spiritual healers? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I believe that this is the right time. It has been long overdue because I'm not, I'm not gonna concentrate too much on apartheid, but I believe that during that time, we were not free to express ourselves. We were not free to become or to embrace who we are. So now that we have the things that we can use, we have social media, we have platforms, even the regulations, some regulations, they also recognize as traditional healers. And then that is why we are able to be free. We are able to register our institutions with the CPIC, which is very good. That also helps knowing that you are at the correct institute. So that one also, I believe it helps us as healers to, to embrace who we are. And another thing, we now is a generation whereby we are fighting the stigma that people are putting on us that you cannot be a healer and be clean. You cannot be a healer and accomplish one, two, three in life. So I believe now it's the right time that you know what people are embracing their, their callings. And also, I always say each and every generation or century or decade is meant for something. So I believe that now it's meant for African people to embrace their spirituality, it's up to us Sangomas to say, we're standing up, this is our century, we're going to make the best out of it and embrace mm -hmm. our roots and show people that we are here just as any other person is here on earth. Okay, well, thank you so much. That makes a lot of sense. So now tell me about you, you know, go, go fix it. Like, um, what is your vision like moving forward? What are you hoping to achieve, you know, through your work? Okay, I, I have I have so many visions. I have I don't have one vision. Mm. I have a lot of visions, but in all of those visions is to seeing is to see people succeed in life, seeing people achieving what they want to achieve, and not having any backlogs of them not not achieving. And also, I want to show people that you can get a, a gobella that is straightforward, that is transparent, that is registered with CIP, CPIC, that has a contract because those things are very important. And right now, actually this year, I'm actually focusing on doing that more, taking in students that have been initiated, but they don't know the Daula, they do not know the carry, they do not know healing types, they don't know how to go about, but they say that was it. And also my doors are also open up for those who are yet to get initiated, but they do not know which step to take. So that's why I also offer I also offer counseling services because I'm also a student in that majors in psychology. So wow. I believe that having a calling it has to do with it. It also affects us psychologically whether we agree or not. But it actually does because it's a very huge part of your life. Whereby now and then you need to go and do self introspection if your mental state is health it's healthy. If you are emotionally stable to handle patients, that is why I always say when I train people, it's not the duration that says you're a healer, but it's the tools that you live from the institute with. You cannot be in an institute and then you are not taught how to handle your emotions, 
how to deal with different clients. You know, at times you wake up at night, 11, 12, you get a call, Gogo, it's an emergency, I need one, two, three. You need to know how to answer that call, even when you are angry, even if, because we are people, we do get angry, we do get frustrated, we, over, we get overjoyed at times, but you have to know how to quickly collect yourself and talk to your clients. You also need to know which uh, healing types you have to take. So that's why I'm focusing more on that because I've noticed that we are always taught the same things, but yet we forget that there are so many different lineages, so many tribes that need different types of healings that resonate to the same healing. So that is my aim to enlighten people more on letting them that on letting on letting them know that there is so many things that you can do yet guiding people in the correct path using the correct ways and staying in the correct lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. You know, psychology and 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 you know, being a healer and using those two things because now you you understanding the you know the the modern uh, you know way of doing things and the traditional way and you're combining them together. I think I think you know more and more people need to do that because then you'll understand you know you get to understand your people more. Okay, so um, last question. Like obviously there are people that that are gonna watch this, and maybe they might feel like yo, uh, I think I'm getting a calling. What advice would you would you give to them? Okay, first of all, you need to get a consultation, book a consultation, and then once you are aware that you have a calling check if the institute you are going to is registered first. Mm -hmm. Also, look for a contract where you're going. That's one is very important because you find that people are washing uh, the gobelas clothes, they're taking their kids to school, they are cleaning and doing all of those things that have been being beaten. Some are being molested during training. So it's very, very much informational that you know that that place is registered. That gobella has impande. So that one is very tricky to know if a gobella has impande. But once that person is registered, it's quite better. You will know where to report them. What is impande? Impande is a type of root that only gobellas have so that we can heal, initiate. So sometimes we'll get that a person is saying they are gobella, but they do not have impande. So that will be a person going to be scammed out of money, you know. So that is very important. And then another thing, when you get into the room, check the certificates. When you leave, check if those certificates are from uh, organizations that exist, organizations that have been there and they're also registered. So that's very important. And the one that I'm forever highlighting, check if there is a contract before you get in at the gate, because at the gate, you get in with money before you pay that money. The contract has been signed. The contract benefits you as a student and also the Gobel. So that's the things that are very important for you to. Okay. Uh, so this uh, impan is the sacred root. So as a normal people, you can't get it. You, you can't tell. <laughs> yes. <you>. No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm just, I'm just curious. Okay. No. Okay. Lastly, how can people get hold of you? Okay. You can search for me at gogofixit.sangoma on Instagram. And then for, me, for you to know that it's the correct Google Fix It, you'll see by my bio, there's only one number on my bio, which is 082-931-6205. And then also you can get me on my WhatsApp number, which is again 082-931-6205. And then most importantly, I do not work with any other Sangoma. I do not work with my students. I do not work with anyone else. If you want to get me, only reach me on that number. And then mm. there's the only Google Fix It or Baba Manzini that you will get. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I know I said the last question, but. And you... then, oh, sorry, I forgot something. Also, yeah. you can check for my institute, it's registered, which is mm. Peuyabadimu Institute of Traditional Healing. So if you want to verify that the institute is, you know, at 100%. You can go and search the institute again. Okay. No, I was gonna ask for no. It sounds like you know, um, you have some sort of like Zulu lineage, you know, in in how you speak Padomotana. Is the, how does that work? I also don't know, but I'm embracing it. I'm even learning how to speak Zulu because of Manzini, which is my ancestor, mm. and then somehow I believe, you know, I I, I the the specific 
um, ancestor that is Zulu or that is Nguni is connected to a Tsonga ancestor that I work with, that I work with on me. So you see, ancestors are always connecting. That is why it's so possible for a person to be having an ancestor from Mozambique, an ancestor mm -hmm. from Nigeria, even if they're South African, even if they are Namibian. That's how ancestors work. Because remember, we use the river for everything when it comes to healing. So a river flows from one country to another. Mm -hmm. That's why you can get so many different types of ancestors and you don't know how. Oh, okay. No, I understand. Thank you so much for your time, uh, go, go Fix It. And yeah, you know, I think a lot of people will learn uh, from this interview. And yeah, we appreciate you. Continue healing people, ne? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope people get enlightened and they learn from this um, interview that we just had. Thank you for having me. All right, man. Shab, shab. Chokozani.